In this video, I'm going to show you a problem and a solution of when you are using a single layer water shader on a plane and you have a directional light that's cast in shadows from nearby geometry. Either the wall is right here, you can see the directional light is right there. It's cast in shadows from this architecture as well as from this column that I placed. And you can see that it's casting a shadow right on top of the water plane. And it shouldn't do that because here's where we should see. If I delete this water plane, I shouldn't have that harsh shadow from the geometry behind me as well as from the column. It should be completely see-through. However, the directional light is creating this issue due to how the directional light and a single layer water shader work. And there are a few ways to fix this. First, let me show you the setup of the material and all the properties that are enabled, disabled for the water plane and for the directional light. This is very important just to eliminate possible check marks somewhere that might be causing this issue other than the directional light. So if I quickly go into this environment, I have the same water plane, but it's an interior shot, no directional light, no interior lights, and this water plane works just fine. And it's casting the proper shadows how it's supposed to, and you can see it works just like it's supposed to and how it's intended. Even if I insert additional light right here and raise it up, you can see it works exactly how you would expect the water to look and not casting that nasty hard shadow the way the directional light does. If I take a look at the material, the water shader, and I select the main node, it is using the shader model, single layer water. And then it's set up with just a few properties, few parameters in order to control the look of the water as well as the waves and the ripples. Very standard and you saw that it works. So it's not the material. If I take a look at the plane and take a look at the properties for the plane, so the cast shadows on the plane have been disabled. That's not the problem because the cast shadows would be behind the plane, not on top of it. So it's not the plane. And then if I take a look at the directional light, let me go ahead and select it and take a look at cast shadows. I do have cast shadows on the directional light. This is how it's supposed to be because if I disable it, then nothing will look correct. And I have all the other properties enabled by default. So I don't want to disable any of these. I want to go ahead and continue using these because otherwise the directional light will break. And you can see that if I delete this water plane, I expect it to be just like this with water on top, just like this right here in this area and not have these shadows, which are obviously being caused by the directional light and the objects that are blocking the light and then casting that shadow on top of the plane. So the first solution is to use ray tracing shadows. So if I search for, I uh, select the directional light and search for ray tracing. And you can see under cast ray traced shadows, it's using project settings. I do have ray tracing enabled for this project. And if you don't have an RTX compatible video card, this option is not going to work for you. So what I could do is enable, instead of use project settings, use cast ray trace shadows for the slide only and switch it to enabled. As soon as I do that, now we get the results that we need to see. You can see that uh, there's a harsh shadow that's been cast on top of the geometry, but then once it reaches the water, the water is behaving exactly how you would expect it. And this shadow right here is gone from the column in front of us. So this can be enabled per light inside the level. If I reset it back to the original setting, use project settings, I can actually enable it globally for this project to use ray traced shadows. So if I go to settings, project settings, and then search for ray trace and actually let me go back to just ray and maybe eliminate the space here we go this is the option i'm looking for so eliminate the space and search for ray trace and the option that i'm looking for is ray trace shadows i can go ahead and enable this and you can see that i have support hardware ray tracing on use hardware ray tracing when available also on and if i enable this let me just uh, move this out of the way if this gets turned on we get the same result as we did when we did it for the direction light alone. So this is for the project itself. And now the water will always work with the direction light when the direction light is casting shadows from nearby objects. So this option requires you to have and enable to use ray tracing and then enable ray traced shadows. If you don't want to use or you can use ray traced shadows and uh, let's go ahead and disable this and you can't or don't want to use this option and have ray traced shadows you do have a few other options. One option is of course, not to use a directional light and only use interior lights. The interior lights without the directional light, any interior lights like point lights, rectangular lights, spotlights, all will work with a single layer water shader. It's the directional light that's causing the issue. 
This option, of course, limits you to not have a direction light inside your scene. So the other option is not to use a direction light, but use only skylight and light your level with HDRIs, HDR images. So for example, if I go ahead and delete this direction light and remove it from the level, right now everything will go dark. Let me search for skylight because I do have a skylight inside the scene. Select it and let me clear the search and then take a look at its settings. I'm going to disable real time capture. This way I get access to the source type and then choose SLS specified cube map and then use a cube map for the skylight to light your environment with. I have a bunch of HDR images here, so I'll just choose one. And as soon as I do, it's using the HDR image and you can see it's lighting the level It's giving us reflections and those shadows are gone and they have been fixed and the level actually looks great. So this option eliminates the direction light and uses only skylight and HDR images. And you don't have to use ray trace shadows. And then the last option, and this is a very limited option, is to use the direction light. And there's a property here inside its settings called source angle. Source angle will soften the edges of the cast shadows from the direction light. And it actually works pretty well when it hits other geometry, just the regular static meshes right here. If I increase the source angle, and the default is pretty low, but if I go higher, you can see that it softens that shadow from the nearby geometry and makes it a lot softer. And I can go higher, and it makes that shadow much better and more natural. But of course, it does not work when it hits the water. It works below the water, you can see right here on the edge. This is the shadow that's been cast on top of another static mesh. So if I just lower this, you can see that it's now harder, a sharp line, but when I increase it, it's softer. But this is a shadow on top of the static mesh through the water. But these cast shadows are being cast on top of the water plane. And actually the shadow that's beyond the water, if we could see it, is soft. It's actually just like right here you can see. And if I could see right below it into that depth, you could see that softness. But the direct contact, it's still hard and nothing is happening right here, no matter what I do to this direction light. And that source angle. We still have hard shadows. So it's working, it's just not working on top of the water plane. But it does work through the water on top of other static meshes. And to enable this you have three different console commands that you have to enter. And you have to enter them into the default engine.ini configuration file. So here's what the commands are and how to do it. Shut down your project and go back to your Epic Games Launcher. Go to the library tab locate your project and the project that I was using is this one right here tests version 5.5. The same steps will work in all previous versions. Right click on your project and go to show in folder. Then navigate into the configuration folder and you want to choose this default engine.ini. Make a copy of it so you have backup and I already made backup right here. Just simply control C and control V so if anything gets messed up you can always come back to it. Then open up this default engine.ini. Scroll down until you see r dot and a console command. And my last console command under this r dot is lumen hardware. So I'm going to go right out to this and I'm going to enter three console commands right here. And this is very important that you enter it right below it and not at the end. So right below the last r dot command, the three commands are right here. r dot water dot single layer dot depth prepass gets turned on. Then single layer shader support VSMF filtering gets turned on. And then single layer water VSMF filtering also gets turned on. These are the three commands you want to enter. And I'll have this text ready for you in the description to this video, as well as if you watch on this within the blog post. Once you enter these commands, just like this, go ahead and save it. File, save. Then go ahead and open your project back up. Here we are back in the map. And if I go ahead and zoom in, you can see that the shadow is a little softer than it was before. Let me go back to the direction light. Let me select it and increase the source angle. Now when you increase the source angle, you can see that both the shadow that's being cast on other static meshes right here, that little corner, that gets softer as well as everywhere else, not just through the water. You can see that it gets softer. And then also you get the same softness on the shadow that's being cast on top of the water plane. So here's what we had before, very sharp and now everything gets soft. So this allows you to tweak that setting and affect both directional light cast shadows on top of other static meshes as well as on top of the single water shader. And this is how you can get 
softer more natural shadows without using ray trace shadows now the reason this option is limited is because you still have that shadow on top of the water plane so this is only a solution when you have water that's very shallow so if i just grab the static mesh and let me just make a copy of this just duplicate it so it's uh, just on top so any depth that you have in the water is not going to work it will only work in areas of your environment where there is shallow water. So this works great when I just raise that bottom where the water is higher. So this is more natural and this is what you would expect. But with any depth like you saw here, let me go ahead and delete them. This option is not going to work. So it's limited in terms of where it can be used. And it's a great option to use. However, there's a major limitation to it. And that is it has to be shallow depth. And then you have to see the bottom surface, which should be your landscape or your static mesh. So I hope this helps some of you and I will see you in the next video.